Now for our story. Tonight, while she dressed for the opening of Wakefield's new supper club, Lily Devon had been overcome with what she recognized as the first night jitters. She worked so hard trying to make the place attractive, getting a good orchestra, making arrangements for food and drinks. But that had been three or four hours ago, and by now, Lily knew the success of the place was assured. The music was good, the dinner had been excellent. When the little white piano was wheeled out and Lily sat down at it with a spotlight turned on her for to sing a few numbers, there had been tremendous bursts of spontaneous applause. They called her back for encore after encore. Now, flushed with happiness and excitement, Lily holds up her hands for silence. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Now, don't be scared, everybody. I'm allergic to long speeches myself, so I'm not going to make one. But I do want to tell you how grateful I am for the swell response you've given us tonight. Really, you've been wonderful. I'm glad you like my songs. Because, <laughs> because you're probably going to see quite a lot of me around here. And if you don't like them, well, we'll all be out of luck, I guess. Uh, really, you've all been swell. And I want to take this opportunity right now to thank all the people who worked to get the place ready. I think they did a good job, don't you? I guess, I guess most of you know what the real purpose of this supper club is. There's a certain person in this town you all know. I'm going to introduce her and ask her to say a few words in just a minute. But she's pretty shy, so first, I want you to know this whole thing was her idea. She wanted the youngsters here around Wakefield to have a place where they could go to dance and have a good time. A place which would be theirs, where they wouldn't have to spend a lot of money for a chance to enjoy themselves. Well, we got to talking it over and decided that if the grown-ups would support us at reasonable prices, we could turn the club over to the kids for a minimum on their night. And that's what we're going to do. And so I'd like to turn the floor over to the person who's responsible for the supper club, Aunt Mary Lane. club was your brainchild, you know. Come on, tell the folks about it. Why, well, I don't know what to say, Lily. I'm not accustomed to being in front of an audience like this. But this isn't an audience, Aunt Mary. This is just a lot of friends, your friends, who've gotten together to your invitation to have a good time. Isn't that right, folks? <laughs> well, well, everybody, I... well, all I want to say is that I'm awfully glad you all came and that you're enjoying yourselves. As Lily told you, for a long time I've had the feeling there was a need here in town for a place the youngsters could think of as their own. And I believe this supper club will provide the answer. As Lily says, uh, if we grown-ups get in the habit of dropping in for dinner and a little relaxation, that will mean we can afford to let the young folks take over at a cost that will, well, just cover expenses. And judging from the reception tonight, I don't think there's much worry about whether people will enjoy themselves. <laughs> my, my, when I look around, the difference. I remember the last time I was here for a lecture by that missionary to Africa. Well, I looked around me at those dreary, dark brown walls this place had, and the awful drapery, and I said to myself, maybe before we start brightening the lives of the African natives, we better do something about the banquet hall at the Brown Palace Hotel. <laughs> <laughs> but we certainly don't have to worry now. Lily did a wonderful job. She's been working night and day ever since she came to Wakefield. And I, for one, think she deserves all the credit and gratitude we can give her. Yeah. Thanks, Aunt Mary. And now I believe the boys in the orchestra are all set to give out with another number. So, everybody dance. As the orchestra struck up and Aunt Mary returned to the table where Randy and Lefty Larkin were sitting, Lily's eyes searched the room. At last, she found the person she was seeking, David Bowman, who was standing in one of the doorways which led onto the veranda. Lily set her way across the room to him. After a moment's conversation, they disappeared outside. <laughs> you know, Mr. Bowman, I was looking all over for you. Well, that's nice of you, Lily. Uh, 
Shall we sit down for a moment? Uh, yes, let's. Oh. You must be tired. I've been watching you, and you haven't been still a minute all evening. Well, it has been kind of rugged. Oh, but it's worth it. Do you realize it? You're a success. <laughs> I realize that you are, my dear. So, this evening has been quite a revelation to me. I'd no idea that... that... No idea about what? Well, you see, I've never had the pleasure of observing you in your professional capacity before. I'm very much impressed. Impressed? Oh, I don't see why. I'm really not much of an MC. Oh, but you are, really. You have just the right quality. Informal, friendly. And you project a, a sincerity. Well, I certainly wasn't kidding when I told them how happy I am that they seem to be enjoying themselves. Oh, gosh. I was in a blue funk about 5 o'clock this afternoon. I was absolutely positive the place was going to be a dismal failure. <laughs> well, that's only natural. Opening night and all. Yeah. <laughs> I only hope they couldn't tell how scared I was. Honestly, when I got up there to sing the first time, my knees were so wobbly you think this was a New York opening. I'd never believe you were a bit nervous if you weren't telling me. You're a very finished performer, my dear. I've been around a lot in my time, in fact, all over the world. And you, you have that precious something that makes for success. Well, thanks, Mr. Bowman. That makes me feel good, even if I don't deserve it. But you do, though. It's a very precious gift, that power to hold an audience. I believe it's something a person has to be born with. It can't be developed unless the, the basic essentials are there. <laughs> oh, nobody ever spoke about my ability in such a flattering way before. Not even when I was doing a comedy dance routine in a burlesque some years ago. Burlesque? Yeah. That doesn't exactly add social distinction to my background, I guess, but burlesque is a great school, and I'm not ashamed of it. No reason why you should be, really. As a matter of fact, some of the biggest names in entertainment have come up from burlesque, I understand. Oh, sure. But most people never think of that. That's one of the things I like about you, Mr. Bowman. You know a whole lot more about things than a person would expect. You're hep. <laughs> so I'm hep, am I? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't ever have to worry about you understanding things. Well, thank you, Lily. <laughs> We're certainly tossing the bouquets back and forth tonight, aren't we? <laughs> sort of a mutual admiration society, you might say. <laughs> Look, why don't we go in and have a dance? How about it, huh? No, uh... You went along, Lily. I'm pretty rusty, I'm afraid. And besides, you ought to be with the young people. It isn't right for an old fogey like me to monopolize your time. But now, why don't you run along and give one of the young men about town a break? But you're my escort for the evening. Oh, that doesn't make any difference, Lily. It was nice of you to seek me out so we could have this little chat, but... Besides, I I'd rather stay here with you, Mr. Norman. I like talking with you. It's... It's restful. <laughs> yes, sir. Hmm? Now, dear, at your age, I'm sure that's the last thing you need. Rest. With all that wonderful vitality of yours, that splendid capacity for happiness, laughter. No. It's much too soon for you to be thinking in terms of peace and quiet. Maybe it seems that way. But you see, I've had enough excitement in my life already to last me a long, long time. Ever since I was a kid. That's all there was. Excitement, hustling for booking, traveling around. That's why I enjoy being with you. You see, I've never known a man like you before. In a way, I, I think I've been looking for the sort of person you are. As the beautiful young woman made this simple statement, David Bowman smiled. Lily, David told himself, found in him the relationship she had missed so much as a child. A loving, understanding father. 